Zooey Mama, how's it going? I'm here today to talk about Blob. Blob is the newest card coming to Marvel Snap, and I'm going to give my thoughts if he is worth buying or if he's a bit of a bust and you might want to save your resources for another card. Now, Blob is coming out on December 12th into Series 5, so he will be a full 6,000 tokens. He's a 6 cost, 4 powered card, and you can see his ability here is on reveal, merge your deck into him. So he will gain the total power of all the cards that were in your deck. Not the abilities, just their power, but then it gets rid of your deck, so you won't be trying anymore. And he also has an ongoing ability that he cannot be moved. Now, before I give my thoughts on Blob, it is important to note that he is coming out in the spotlight caches alongside the Living Tribunal and Ravana Renslayer. Now, I'm not sure the Living Tribunal is worth chasing after unless you really want him. I play him a decent amount, but I don't know if he's worth chasing after, but Ravana is pretty strong. And both the Living Tribunal and Ravana were buffed after they were released and after they were last featured in Spotlight Caches. So a lot of people skipped on them because they just weren't worth it at the time, and now they're much better, okay? So there are a lot of people, you may be one of them, that you just need all three of these cards. So this might just be an easy pickup regardless of your thoughts on Blob. The more I think about Blob, the better I think he is. I mean, he has such a crazy ability. It's pretty unique, but it can just go so big, okay? He is a bit one-dimensional. He's really just powering up himself. The ongoing ability doesn't really matter too much. In fact, I think that ongoing ability is actually bad. I think it's harmful for him and we'll talk about that. But overall, I think he's an interesting card and he's maybe the most flexible card coming out this month. We've seen Sebastian Shaw who really just seems to work in surfer decks. And then we're gonna have Havoc and Celine coming out later and they seem pretty specific as well. I don't think they're gonna work in too many different decks or archetypes, whereas Blob, there's a couple decks that he works with, okay, and I'm going to show you one right here. But essentially, you want them in decks that have big powered cards because he's going to gain their power. Now, I said his ongoing ability was bad. He will lose his ability if you play Sauron. He will lose his on reveal and his ongoing. So a lot of people are going to be looking to play Blob in a Shuri deck because Shuri has big powered cards like Taskmaster, Typhoid Mary all that, and you often play Sauron in a Shuri deck, okay? But if you play Sauron, he's going to affect Blob because Blob does have an ongoing ability, and Sauron removes all abilities from cards with ongoings, not just their ongoing ability, okay? So Blob will just be a six cost, four powered card in your hand with no ability if you play Sauron. So if you are thinking Shuri, you might wanna do a Shuri deck without Sauron, but even Shuri doesn't power up Blob too much. So you need to think about that. In terms of the deck I put together, I'm looking at this Electro Sandman ramp list. And when you are building a deck with Blob, you can actually just do some math ahead of time to know what Blob's power will be. So here we are. We're looking at the average power of this deck, excluding Blob. Okay, so the other 11 cards, the average power is 5.3. Now, usually on turn six, you will have three cards left in your deck, assuming that no cards got added or removed. And you can take that three cards times by the average, which is 5.3 here, add Blob's base power of four, and we're looking at 20 power. Blob could be a 20 powered card on average in this deck if you play him on turn six, but you could even play him on turn five if you wanted, and then he would average about 25 power. And again, he has no other requirement besides the fact that he's, you know, destroying your deck essentially, but that's the power of infinite, but you don't have to skip turn five and you don't need to play magic to extend the game and then skip turn six to do some infinite on seven. I mean, you can just drop an infinite on turn six essentially, even after you played a card on turn five. So Blob can be very strong. Again, you're gonna play him in decks with really big cards, but you could even have a bigger deck than this where Blob averages over 20 on the regular. So here, again, it's an Electro ramp list. We've got Sandman to just hard counter some opponents. You can play Blob plus Arnim Zola, or you can do Black Panther into Arnim Zola and then Odin on top of that, uh, Magneto, 
Aero are just for disruption. They also just have a high base power and Iron Lad can copy a bunch of stuff. So Blob on turn five or turn six in this deck works. And then you just take it from there. So I think this is gonna be my uh, deck list day one. I will have a link to this deck on snap.fan and you can copy the code as well in the description for this video. So keep an eye out for that link. And yeah, Shuri, Electro Ramp, maybe Hella Discard are going to be the obvious choices for Blob, but I think that's flexible enough. And so I'm giving Blob four stars out of five. I actually think he might be the best card that comes out this month because he fits into a couple different archetypes. And again, just Infinite. He's like a, a better Infinite is how I see him. Maybe worse in Lockjaw decks because... If you get him out too early, he's going to destroy your deck and then Lockjaw is useless. Okay, so there are some decks where you would play Infinite, but not Blob. Um, but I just think he's, he's really strong. And it is worth noting that Blob will hard counter Darkhawk. Darkhawk decks rely on putting cards, specifically rocks, into your deck so that they can gain power on their Darkhawk, right? The more cards you have in the deck, the stronger your opponent's Darkhawk is, well, Blob, you're getting rid of your entire deck. So if your opponent has Darkhawk, it's going to be at zero power. And in fact, if they put rocks into your deck earlier on and you draw those rocks, it means you have more cards with power in your deck for Blob to merge into. So Blob will actually be stronger and he will make your opponent's Darkhawk weaker. So we're seeing a lot of Darkhawk right now. It's all over the meta that's going to go bye-bye once Blob comes out. Okay, he is kind of one-dimensional. He doesn't do any crazy utility. It is possible your opponent counters Blob with something like Leech. Obviously, they could try and, you know, just stop you with Cosmo. And there are some locations that just hurt for him. If he accidentally gets played early, like the location Sakar, if that pulls Blob on turn one, you just lose your entire deck, okay? There's not that many locations that Blob actually synergizes with. He's got some ones that are really bad for him, uh, but he does work on Lecha Gia, I think is how you pronounce it, and Vibranium Mines, because they add cards to your deck, which means Blob's going to have more cards to add merge into himself to power up okay so he's going to counter dark hawk which that alone means he's going to change the meta once he comes out and then i think he sits as a staple as the new you know just big raw power six drop because i think it's unmatched i mean he doesn't really have much of a ceiling right he could be over 20 or over 30 power in some scenarios and he's much easier to play than infinite so i think he's just the new big powerful six drop um, I think he's going to be better than Sebastian Shaw has been. I think he's going to be better than Havoc and maybe even better than Celine this month. So I personally am excited for Blob. The more I think about him and the decks you could put him in and just his raw power, the better I think he is. Still a bit one-dimensional, but that's just crazy power. So I give Blob four out of five stars. I think he's solid. I think he is worth getting, and especially if you do need the Living Tribunal or Ravana Renslayer still. I would definitely try and get Blob from Spotlight Caches. And we'll have to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Let me know what you think of Blob in the comments down below. And until then, I'll see you next time.